to continue with exercise one, I have the inside space of my string. I basically have all the empty space selected with the magic wand. It's like a stencil mask. And if I select a different layer than where my string is, my selection will move with me. So that allows me to erase specifically from those spots in the layers that are overlapping with my string. So I want my string to be, it's the cat's cradle, it's the title of the book. I want it to be pretty clear. So now I'm erasing from the trash can layer anything within the string. And then sometimes I need to go back to the tree layer. So we're really starting to recognize the differences in our layers and how to move between them. And it can get confusing. So to me, the easiest is often just to do one at a time. So for instance, just have the tree layer open and just erase from that first. See if there are any other overlaps. I think that's all of them. And then turn the tree layer off and then go to the trash can layer and erase any of those overlaps. All right, and I think that's all of them. Remember, don't let perfection be the enemy of good. So while you're doing this, I can see little, little watermark <laughs> remainders from the trash can one. Remember, I chose that because it was watermarked to show you how to clean that up. And exercises like this, we're just getting used to compositing. We don't need to be hyper detailed. So now for my hands, they're very similar to the string. How do I get my hands to, how do I erase everything inside the hands except for the string? Well, I'm going to turn the string off because I don't want it affected. And I'm just going to look at the hand and I'm going to see where it overlaps. And because the hand is completely enclosed, I can use the magic wand and just the delete key. So I'll show you with this hand first. So I'm just going to click on the magic wand, select the select contiguous on magic wand, and select just the empty space within the hand, and then hit delete on the layer I want it to delete from, which would be the trash can layer. And there you go. I can do the same with the other hand, but I don't like, this is what's called a tangency in design. It's uncomfortable touching, like an uncle at a family reunion. So when that happens in a visual design, it, it draws unwanted attention, right? So when I see that, I realize I need to move both the hands down just a little bit to avoid the tangency. So how do you avoid the tangency? You can increase the overlap or you can open the space between them. So we're just gonna nudge them down a little bit. And then I can actually select two layers at once because you can add to selections, right? So because I moved this hand, there might be a little bit of debris there that still needs to be erased. So I'm going to use the magic wand and select with contiguous the space inside that hand. Then I'm going to select with shift, you know, adding to the selection, I can add to the magic wand too. I'm going to select this layer for this hand. And I'm going to do, once, once both layers are selected, because you held down shift, they're both gray, I can merge them together. And the shortcut for that is Command E, but you can find it under Layer and Merge Layers. So now my hands are back on the same layer, which then allows me to use 
my magic wand and then hold down shift and use the magic wand in the other hand and then delete that shape from the trash can on both sides. Done. I can keep that selection open and I can erase it from every other layer that I've placed just by hitting delete. But there is no other layer that overlaps with it except for the string. But for the string, I don't want the hand to be on top of the string. I want the string to be on top of the hand. So what do I do? I click on the empty space of the string layer and then use my eraser tool to affect the hand layer. And again, just like I did with the other layers, get rid of the, the overlaps that I don't want, just using the eraser tool. And the selection works as a stencil for me, protecting the original lines, kind of giving me a, an eraser mask. And if you've used Photoshop before in another class, especially for photography, there is something called the clipping mask, which does a similar thing. We are not going to use that this semester because a clipping mask is an indirect way of dealing with pixels. And I'm always going to try to teach you just how to use it directly. Because if a raster program is about modified pixels, I want you to know how they're modified directly. And then with a little bit more advancement, you can play with the indirect ways that they're modified. Okay, the next layer, the igloo. I'm not thrilled with the igloo yet. I'm going to keep playing with its size because as you arrange other things, you might decide on other issues. So I'm going to make it a little bit smaller. I'm going to make it a little bit thicker using its layer style effect. Then I'm going to rasterize the layer style so I can delete from it. And I think I'm going to delete the trash can just within a few of these cells of the igloo. So I'm going to use my magic wand with contiguous turned on to select some of these cells, these ice cubes, and then I'm going to erase that from the trash can. And then on the other cells of the igloo, I'm going to select them. You can also name your layers, which can help when it gets pretty confusing. And I'm going to hold down shift and select both of these top ones. And on those, I'm going to, well, I could erase it so the igloo is in front of everything. But I think what might be more interesting is to actually erase the igloo where it overlaps with the trash can. So I'm going to instead go to the trash can layer and select its empty space with contiguous turned off, then use that as a mask to erase from the igloo layer where it's overlapping, like so. Hit Command-D to deselect. And yeah, I think that makes a little bit more sense, just visually for what I'm going for. And then the final element, even though I already have five, is this signature. How to deal with this signature. I want it to be the big element the big chaotic element. So what I'm going to do is actually select all of these other layers by holding down shift, every layer that's turned on right now. But if I hold down shift, it will select every layer in between. So if I want to selectively select layers, I hold down command. And this is true across a Mac operating system. So if I hold down command, I can select only the layers I want. And then once they're all selected, I can hit command T and I can transform them all together and make them just a little bit smaller 
Move them a little bit up and centered. And now I can do Command T with the explosion of his signature. And now I can selectively erase away from it to give me my line art jumble illustration of Ice Nine and Cat's Cradle. And I'm not even going to mask it at all. I'm just going to use my eraser tool directly and just cut away from it. Anything I think is confusing or distracting. Kurt Vonnegut was a smoker. So to make this appropriate for children, I'll take away his cigarette. like we do, like they did for Walt Disney all over the Walt Disney parks. They digitally removed the cigarettes from all of his photographs. And then I can make the decision not only to erase from the, the Vonnegut portrait, but I can also decide to erase from some of the other layers. if I think that's helpful. And I can always zoom in and out and get a sense of what that's doing. So for instance, his eye is pretty important. So I might sacrifice the string a little bit for the clarity of the eye. And I can increase my eraser size. But when I use this eraser, I want to use it at 100% opacity and at 100% hardness. So it is a lot like using the lasso and delete. Just going between my different layers. And I get this nice push and pull between all the different source images I'm using. Sometimes letting one go on top, sometimes letting the other. And the cat's cradle, the string, is a, a nice kind of metaphor for that with layers how things are woven together when you composite. Some go above, some go behind. And sometimes it gets really confusing. Okay. And I want to leave a little bit of his signature in the middle there. So here we have my line art jumble for Kurt Vonnegut's ice or a cat's cradle. I could see how I could use a little bit more maybe on the bottom here. I could see it working with a type solution, being a poster, being a t-shirt. But this isn't a finished assignment. This is just an exercise. So at this point, I need to make sure I save my work as a Photoshop file. So I can do just save. And then I want to save it as a JPEG. So I'm going to say file, save a copy. And this is going to go up into Canvas. And then in the next video, I'll show you some optional things we can do.